when I came to MIT, yeah. I became a NASA PI, and this award recognizes 10 years of being principal investigator. I put in proposals, got my own samples, and they were locked at night in a safe, and the guard would come by three times a night, and they were so precious mm -hmm. that even every milligram of dust had to be accounted for. We have a small place up on a lake in upper New York State, and I was there alone with my three children, and they were all asleep when they announced. And I was all alone and no one to share that wonderful moment mm -hmm. when we realized that we'd actually had someone on the moon. Mm -hmm. And I remember very definitely thinking, I need to get up and walk down to the dock and look and see if I can see the moon. Did you have any idea what you were getting yourself into? Did you know exactly where you would be going and what you would be doing? I had a rough idea what they were doing, but not exactly. But even when I get there, you know, even when I do and that, I still don't know exactly what, mm -hmm. what they try to, you know, to mm -hmm. do. And all they just tell you is just, we, we had a mission. What was it like living on Ascension Island? Well, on, on the island is isolated. It's, is all volcanic, six square mile, it's mm -hmm. no vegetation, nothing. But they have very good service. They can move every night, and they get uh, a hobby room, so you could play pool, and and we we usually either play sports after hour, mm -hmm. or on a play tennis. They just said that it's a job. Okay. You know, we're going to pay you. Of course, they said, you're helping the Apollo mission. Each one of us had our own console, and it had about six or eight gauges on it. And the gauges went negative 40 up to positive 40. And we had a little red button that we were supposed to push yeah. whenever the gauges went over the 40. And most of the time, they'd come, like, right almost up to it. Uh, th that was the story, that we were going to help the Apollo mission, we were going to help the astronauts mm -hmm. so that they could uh, do a better job in the cockpit. Let me just say that the TV 50 years ago in 69 wasn't like TV as yeah, today. Yeah, it wasn't high def, you right? Know, it wasn't <laughs> high def, it wasn't big widescreen TVs yeah. or anything. So the pictures that were coming back were a bit grainy, and yeah. they were they were kind of hard to make out. But uh, you know, you could tell that they they were somewhere else other than on Earth. Clearly, it was an amazing thing because President Kennedy had said we we're going to land a man on the moon, and here we were, just like eight years later, and here we were on the moon, and it was something that. It was important to, to I think, to all Americans and, and for many different reasons, mm -hmm. not just for the fulfillment of that dream and that pledge, but we were still in the midst of the Cold War mm -hmm. and in competition with the Soviet Union. We were really afraid that they were going to take over in space. They would be able to take a military advantage, and uh, we fought hard to catch up. You could see it before you could hear it because we were 10 miles away. And mm -hmm. eventually uh, this thing started to move off the ground and fires coming out of it. And then later on you could hear this tremendous roar. I mean, even from that far away, mm -hmm. it felt like the ground was shaking. And people were cheering and screaming and just crazy about seeing this thing go up into the sky. I'm uh, from a little island called Penang in the west coast of Malay, the Malay Peninsula. It's a very small island. Uh, no you know, magazines, no current newspapers, uh, no television. And so the first time I knew that men landed on the moon was when I went to visit the United States Information Service. 
And when I went to the library, the first thing I saw on the window display was three astronauts. I was really amazed by it. And I looked at the three men holding their helmets, and they have landed on the moon, and I didn't know about it.